Let's look at clinching, specifically the technical way to control somebody in a clinch. Most of our self-defense techniques are going to lead to getting a hold of somebody, to clinch him, to prevent him from being able to execute his techniques. A lot of people teach different positions that you're going to be in for a clinch. What I want to do is give you a framework, a guideline, that's going to give you the idea of exactly what you should be doing in the clinch, regardless of which specific techniques you're using to control. This is a control theory I heard one instructor refer to as the five swords. I like that. It's a nice analogy because we want to think of our opponent as having five primary weapons. His two arms, his two legs, and his head. Of course, his hips are connected to his legs and they're one of the most important things. But as a general outline, we just want to refer to these five separate points. Now, what's really valuable about this operating theory is it's going to work against strikes or his counter takedowns. So what I'm saying is by the same way that I control him from hitting me is the same way that I can counter his takedowns and counter maneuvers known as pummeling when he's trying to regain control. It's really simple, but it makes a lot more sense if we put it in the striking context in the beginning. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm standing close enough for a man to hit me. I need to tie him up in a way that I take all his weapons away. His first weapon is probably his primary attacking tool, his right hand. So in this case, let's put an overhook over this. There's different ways to do it, and I'm not talking specifically about which control I'm using, just where. So my first one is the overhook. He can't obviously punch me with this hand. That leaves four others. The most important one that was neglected in old style jiu-jitsu was the head. If I'm out this far, obviously he can headbutt me, or if he hasn't had lunch, he can try to bite me too. So I need to take his head away as a weapon. A lot of people don't realize the head is not only a weapon for striking, but it's used a lot in wrestling and grappling. So I need to have my head on the inside of his head. So push in with your head. You see how I'm blocking his head? Try to headbutt me. It doesn't work very well. If he winds up his head and does this, he's headbutting himself. Try to bite me. It doesn't work very well. So I want to make sure that my head is placed on the same side as the arm I control his primary tool. Okay? Secondly, there's space between, excuse me, third, there's space between us, he can knee me. So I may have his head controlled, I may have the arm controlled, but if my hips are back too far, he's going to start laying the knees into me. If it's on the street, it can be in the groin, It'll get you flinching and letting go and taking the strength out of you. So I want to start blocking his third sword, inside hip position. Straighten up a little bit here. Now, that leaves the last two on the far side. These are less of a threat to you by their position. So with my head here behind his head, it's difficult for him to reach me with his hand anyhow. Not impossible, but more difficult. And this leg here can reach me, but again, the angle isn't conducive. So the first three on the same side as you're going to work are your important ones. So after he throws his punch, I make my entry. I'm going to end up something like this. I want to make sure that I have control of these three points here first. Now, the fourth sword is not difficult to do. He swings at me here, I can catch it. I can just keep it off me by blocking like this. But usually, you're going to trap it here, or you can slide down. If you're on the street and he's got a jacket on of some kind, it's easy to control a guy by the wrist. Obviously, it's more difficult in a, in a no-gi situation when you're training for MMA or something. Here, if he keeps ripping his arm away, rip your arm away. Don't try to re-grip him at the wrist. You grip at his bicep. So I'm here. He rips the arm away to try to hit me, wind up and hit me. I go here. Okay. Now, I can control all four points pretty effectively. It really only leaves the fifth one. And if I have good control of the other four, he's going to have too much weight on that one. To reiterate, this is your basic operating theory of how to control a person when you're in a clinch. It doesn't matter if you're using an overhook underhook or inside hook. The point is you need to have some kind of control on that primary tool, his primary striking tool, which is usually his right hand. In this case, I'm going to overhook it. So now he can't hit me with this one. I don't want to get head butted or uh, get bit or anything like that. So I put my head under his. It's important my head is under his. So even if I'm taller than the guy, I've got to make sure I'm changing my level. This also gives me a lot more leverage to push on. Now he's going to try and hit me with the other hand. I can control that even though it's not that dangerous to me if I'm behind his, his head like this. He can hit me, but he's not going to have a, a solid shot. My leg is on the inside of his. This prevents him from kneeing me or using this leg for any offensive action. The only thing that I can't control directly is his last leg. I have the four points controlled. The fifth one is open, but by good control off the other four, 
I can mess around with his weight enough that he's not going to be able to take his weight off that leg. So no matter why I'm clinching the guy, because he tried to hit me, because he grabbed me first, I need to understand how I can control the clinch. And if I don't, what's going to happen? I can lose control of the clinch. If I lose control of the clinch, it's easier for him to hit me or take me down. So all the self-defense techniques that we're using that involve clinching the opponent need to be based on this five swords idea.